we start. Yeah. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. It's really nice to see so many people here. And my name is Andrew, and uh, what I'm doing today, I realize that I'm doing Pearl for 20 years, since 1999. <laughs> and I'm also organizing the Pearl Conference, uh, so it's PearlCon this year in, uh, in, in August, so you can uh, take a look. But I'm not going to promote Pearl here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about uh, one specific part of Pearl 6, which is really interesting, especially uh, in this audience, for creating some uh, compilers, parsers, translators, whatever interpreters for other languages. So I will demonstrate how Pearl 6 can do this stuff today. So basically, uh, just a couple of words about what Pearl 6 is. Uh, so a few years ago, well, three years ago, Larry Wall, the creator of Pearl itself, uh, announced that there's Pearl 6.00 release, and it was done here at FOSDEM. And since, since then, basically, you have this table version of the language specification, and you also have a really uh, nice, nicely working compiler. Uh, you have to realize that Perl 5 and Perl 6 are basically different languages. Of course, they have many things in common, the same spirit of the language, but still it's a separate language, and uh, all that I'm going to talk about is only about Perl 6. So it's different language. Uh, there's uh, only uh, one compiler at the moment, which you can use, it's called Rakudo, and you can download it from uh, rakudo.org, and you can use uh, this compiler to run all the examples that I will uh, demonstrate later. The interesting thing about Perl 6 is that this compiler is also written in Perl 6, so it's self-hosting language, and that's one of the reasons why it took so long to, to bootstrap the, the language. And also there's uh, the MQP, not quite Perl, it's a subset of Perl 6, which uh, was developed to help to build this bootstrapping process. And this is just a random, really random, I just took some uh, uh, random code from a repository. This is the source code of Perl 6, and it's written in Perl 6, plus some, you see, MQP somewhere, uh, which uses some MQP calls to uh, do some low stuff, low level stuff. But this, uh, this image is not uh, aimed to show you how difficult Perl 6 is. It's not a noise language. It's internals of the compiler, so it has to be uh, something difficult. Basically, in Perl 6, you can do things like this. So you can use Unicode characters. You can use, for example, uh, superscripts to create the, uh, the power, the, Q, the, the, the power of a variable instead of uh, using two stars, for example. But that, that's a side story. So what's uh, interesting in Perl 6 for creating other uh, languages is that they have the updated regular expression engine, and the regular expressions are not called regular expressions. Well, they are not regular, that regular. They are now called regexes or regexes, whatever you like to read it. And the second part is that uh, Pelsic has kind of extended uh, version of reg regular expressions, which are called grammars. And that's the end of the slides. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you how, how quickly you can uh, create a compiler. Well, not necessarily it should be a compiler. By compiler, I mean that uh, it's some program that translates, that reads, that understands language, not necessarily compiles it to a, uh, an executable file in binary code. So here's the empty file. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, create uh, a program that will be able to understand uh, this program. For example, it's just a, a random language. It's not language. I'm, uh, is it big enough? Uh, and I'm going to print it. So imagine that uh, this, uh, this line is the line in language, which is the minimal, uh, minimalistic language. And I'm going to parse and execute it using Perl 6 grammars. So uh, what I'm going to do, I have to create the grammar. So I have to describe the language. It's somehow similar to what uh, BNF uh, syntax is using. Uh, so I create the grammar. I can call it whatever I, I want. And that's basically the class. So the syntax really resembles how you define classes in other programming languages. But instead of methods, you have rules and tokens. So my first rule, and it should be called top, so the, the beginning, my first uh, rule is to pass the whole uh, sentence, the whole program. So my program is basically uh, a list of statements. A list of statements, and 
what I'm typing now, this line 5, is actually the regular expression, which is embedded inside the Perl 6 code. So grammar, line 3, rule, line 4 are Perl 6 code. Inside, line 5 is basically already a regular expression. Not irregular, a regular. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, more than one statement, or actually it's zero. It's, uh, syntax is really like a regular, regular expression, so the star uh, quantifier means there can be zero or more repetitions of something on the left. And then I uh, tell that these statements are separated by the semicolon. So that's simple. What I have to do now, so I uh, described this grammar to some extent. And now I can use this grammar to pass uh, the string containing this program in this programming language. That's it. After that, I, for example, can uh, say, uh, say is uh, operated to print uh, in Perl 6. So I can use this test.pl. No, so yeah, of course, because there are no statements. So I have to define them. So a statement actually is in a set, uh, the next uh, rule which I have to implement. Uh, statement start. And what is a statement? A statement is, in my example, it's either, either the vertical bar, bar for or, either a variable declaration, so I can type variable declaration, or uh, the printing instruction, for example, well, actually we can call it just a function call, right? And from this moment I have to define what is a variable declaration, what is a function call, and again, it's uh, really simple, uh, so I can variable declaration, uh, what is it? It's a string var followed by variable name, variable name, followed by equal sign, followed by some number, and so on. So I have to uh, also explain to Perl, uh, to Perl 6, what is a variable name. So I create another rule, but this time it will, be, with not, it will not be a rule, it will be a token. Why a token? Because a variable name is something that, do, do not contain, that does not contain spaces inside. So Perl 6 understands that, for example, in the line one, I will omit spaces around the equal sign, it will still work. So I don't have to do any extra work to explain that it is allowed there. So Perl 6 will understand as soon as, as I'm using the rule keyword, it will understand that spaces around parts of the expressions are valid things. So what is a, a variable name? Basically it's uh, just some, some letters or whatever, some word, word characters, more than one. Uh, the same for the number. Uh, let's do a simple thing. For example, uh, numbers are only digits, so it's uh, integers, positive, but for our example is more than enough. And what else? We have uh, the function call thing. So let's create another rule, function call, which will uh, expect a function name. In our case, it's only print. So we are only uh, having a single uh, function in this language, followed by a variable name. So more or less, that's it. So what I also sorry. So uh... yes. Uh, so what I also want to. Uh... Uh, you to take a look at, so for example, line 13, rule variable dash declaration. In Perl 6, dash is a valid character for, uh, it can be used inside the identifier of the, for example, variable or function or method name. Okay, so it looks like okay, let's try running it. No, still no method statements, uh, because it has to be statement and S is uh, like, yeah, it's the star. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the output of this program. So what it uh, says, it says that uh, it managed to pass the, the top line containing the program, and basically it then demonstrates, so it contains a statement, var x is 20, the second statement is print x, 
and each statement has some uh, details about what it is. In the first time, uh, in the first case, it's a variable declaration with the variable name and the number that is assigned to this variable. In the second case, it's again the function call, the function name. Well, the function name is missing here because we didn't create the special uh, rule or token for the function name. Uh, but still, we have uh, the variable name x extracted. So basically, uh, here we already pass in the program. So Perl 6 understands, well, my program, my test program understands what's uh, the structure of this program. And the next step is just to execute this. So, yeah, and also notice that uh, unlike traditional approaches to creating compilers, there's no separation for like lexer and parser. Everything goes in a single grammar. So my variable declaration, my numbers, uh, and like equal sign or var keyword are living here. Uh, there's no special uh, lexer which extracts the parts of the language first. So now the second part. The second part is to execute this. So what I want, I want to print 20 in the uh, console. And what I will do, I will add actions, so-called actions, to uh, my grammar. So this is the uh, placeholder for the action. So again, line 13 starts with some Perl code inside which we have some regular expression inside which we have, again, a block which contains Perl 6 code. So here, where the uh, line 15 is, I will type some Perl code, and I will just save this variable in some variable storage. So this is how I can do it. Uh, do it. Variable name uh, is number. I will explain this plus. And of course, I have to create some uh, storage for this. So I can create the hash uh, var, which will contain my variables, and after the program is uh, passed, I can just type it and see what's there inside. So what's there inside? You see this line, the, the last line? Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, this line. So Fortum doesn't like Perl. Uh, so this line demonstrates the uh, content of this variable storage after I passed and executed uh, the action. So you see, so x contains 20. And uh, now, actually, I can create another action which will use this value to print it. Uh, so I have to go to the function call rule. And here, I will just uh, print. So the, in Perl 6, there are two uh, functions that print. Well, actually, there's more. Uh, so there's print. But also there's three letters say, uh, which also adds the new line at the end of the output, which is really handy in many cases. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to print this exact value. Uh, that's it. So you see, uh, just above, uh, there's 20 in the output. So, so it works. And of course, uh, it is not limited to this program uh, only. I can extend it. I can add, for example, while Oh, well, another variable, which is 42, and I can print it. And you see, so 42 is here. And I also see what the structure of this program is. So basically, that's a, a really short demonstration of uh, what you can do with grammars. And you can do really quickly. So like, it took me five minutes to type this. Uh, and it's already a working prototype of what you can expect. Uh, of course, the bigger the language becomes, uh, the more is your desire to split Perl 6 and regular expression parts of this grammar. So what can be done, uh, you can extract uh, these parts of uh, the grammar to separate class, uh, yeah, class A, for example. And what you have to do, so we are going to move this to the methods of this class. And the name of the method should be the same. So it's method this time. Should be the same as the method uh, and the rule name that uh, is activating this action. So it's variable declaration, method variable de declaration. And it's just the Perl code, which, OK, I have these, uh, which does uh, what it did before. But you also, uh, well, expect something in this uh, uh, in some variable which is passed to this method. And also, I can move uh, the uh, function call 
function call action to a separate method. So I will just remove it from the grammar, uh, and I will move it to the function call. And then when I'm passing the string, I can pass in the named attribute actions this uh, class containing actions. And if everything is OK, you will get exactly the same behavior. So nothing changed uh, from the user perspective, but from the perspective of the developer, you have a separate class with Perl 6 code. You have a separate uh, grammar describing the language. And also, so I promised to talk about this. So basically, this dollar slash variable, you can name it differently. Uh, you can just uh, have dollar something. Uh, I, I mean, you can type letters there. Uh, it will contain the information which contains uh, some uh, information similar to what we have here. This parse tree, the, the fragment which is passed at this moment, like function call or variable declaration, is passed further in this method, and you can use it. So basically, uh, when you type this, you are referring to this variable. You are taking it like uh, an element from the hash, uh, and the key for this element is variable name. And on the right side, it's uh, the number. Uh, this, which is selected, is uh, a uh, object of a grammar class, uh, the so-called match object. If you type plus before, you will just ask Perl to make a number out of it somehow. So Perl 6 knows how to convert this match object to a number. And this is exactly what we need. And actually here, it converts the match object to a string. Uh, you can extend it like you can type the tilde before this, uh, but you don't have to do it. Perl 6 will, will do that. So that's, that's the uh, short example. And if you, uh, I can also show you, so there's uh, github.com slash ash slash lingua is, is an example of much bigger uh, language. It uses the same technique that I just demonstrated. What it uh, contains, uh, it contain, contains a few, a few files. Uh, so there's the grammar. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, you, you can go it uh, yourself if you have uh, internet here. But nevertheless, it's just the bigger thing. Uh, uh, if, for example, we go to the test uh, directory of this, I created some tests. Uh, for example, there's if uh, if a statement implemented in this language, and again, you can find it in the actions and in the grammar class, how we do it. It's really, it's really easy, just step by step to increase your language, starting with the example I demonstrated earlier, and finally, you will have to uh, deal somehow with, for example, functions. So you have to put the function to, so you have to understand that this is a definition of a function. You have to put the parse tree somewhere, and then uh, you have to evaluate it. So uh, if you will, uh, on that GitHub link, uh, so you see there's the grammar, and my top rule states that it's not only statements, it's only, also it can be a comment, for example. And also, I'm clearly uh, separating different type of statements just to make the, the rest of the grammar simpler. Uh, yeah. So, what does it actually mean, a statement equals So it means that uh, instead of, so I can have the vertical bar means or. So it's either this or this or this. But inside, uh, remember that on the previous uh, screen, I showed you the, this thing, dollar something. So when you are inside an action or inside the grammar rule, you can refer to one of those alternatives using the single name. So it's much, much uh, easier than you don't have to create a, like if this is a statement, uh, if it's assignment, if it's something. So yeah. So OK, the final thing, uh, I would really recommend you to read this book. Uh, it contains uh, a lot of examples of how you can root, uh, use grammars. And also, there's something in this book written by me. Uh, you can buy these books downstairs at the Pearl booth. So thanks a lot for listening. I hope uh, it was interesting and uh, yeah, success with Pearl 6 and languages. So Andrew, you can take questions. I will take picture. <laughs> you can take questions and meanwhile we'll talk people. So, I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, what type of grammar is it? This is so <laughs> Yeah. I would I would recommend to 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 what type of grammar is it LL1 this one you mean right it, it, it 
looks for me like a pack grammar, P E G. That's the question to developers more than than to me. Actually, I, I, I think that in the documentation of Perl 6, you don't have the explicit answer to this question, if I'm correct. So basically, yeah, <laughs> if it satisfies. Yes? You said that there is uh, no difference between the lexer and the parser, that's not all in one. Yet in your uh, example, uh, white space was automatically allowed to between the two. Yes. Uh, uh, it's uh, when you're using the rule keyword. If you're using token, that is not allowed. But you also can redefine. So there's the uh, built-in rule called WS, white space, uh, which is uh, explaining what white space is. So it's not just a space, it's like new line, whatever. And you can redefine it, for example, to implement comments. Yeah? Okay, then uh, thanks a lot. Uh? <laughs>